but that's okay. We only covered one problem from 7.2. So I'll just re-record the one problem from 7.2. Not a big deal. But we're starting 7.3. So this video will have 7.3. And really everything that I just said, I said in the lecture videos. So it's the same stuff. You did, but it just made a whole lot more sense to me this time. I don't know if it's because I like pretended to do the problems, but I was like, right. for whatever reason, it just made a lot more sense this time around. So I was like, just in case I need to come back to it. But yeah, yeah. I'll do it again, though. I have it all here. It's all here. So I'll just re and I'll even make it look prettier. <laughs> it won't look so messy. <laughs> so you, you, you saw my chicken scratch or what I submitted for the test. So I have no room to talk. Sure, no worries. No worries. OK, so here we have this graph now. This I know looks like a curve like that, right? The square root of X. It looks like half of a sideways parabola. But because of that plus six, it's actually shifted back six. So it should be one, two, three, four, five, six at negative six. It should be going in that direction. Okay. I don't know how much of this graph I'm gonna need. Um, and if I were to plug in zero, what in the world is the square root of six? It's two point something. So we'll do that one, two, three, four. So we'll get 2.44 is probably about right there, just underneath two and a half, right? And so then this graph will go like this. I don't want to put in dots just because I don't know how much of the graph I need yet. Then you have the line y equals x. Well, that has the point one, one, zero, zero, two, two, so on and so forth. So this one looks like, like this, right? I'm trying my best. I cannot draw. So frustrating. Let's go figure out where these things intersect before I draw that curvy part. How do I solve for X here? Yeah, I get Not yet. When it's a radical equation, you got to get the radical by itself. But it is, right? Not multiply by two, but square. Mm -hmm. So if we square both of our sides, let me make sure I'm recording. <laughs> no, I'm scared. <laughs> so these two go away, right? We get x plus six all by itself. And over here, we get x squared. And then, yes, now we have to get it all to one side, right? So I'm going to minus my x over, and I'm going to minus my six over. Now, this one, you could do quadratic formula, but I know how to factor this, so I'm just going to factor it. It's x minus 3 and x plus 2, right? Don't those multiply to give me negative 6, but combine to give me 1? And if you were to FOIL this out and combine like terms, it should be that. So then I get x equal to positive 3 and x equal to negative 2 if I set each bubble equal to 0 and solve. So then I do need some of the numbers over here, just not all of them. And I need three. So if I plug in negative two in here, that's going to be negative two plus six, which is four. And the square root of four is two. So when I plug in negative two, I get two. When I plug in negative two into the second equation, it's just going to stay negative two, right? So I actually have a point down here that's negative one, and that's negative two. So my point is actually about right there. So you can see my lines off, right? I'm trying. <laughs> I mean, it's a sketch, and as long as you have a sketch, you're good. It doesn't need to be all perfect. You just need to see kind of what's top and bottom, left and right kind of business, OK? So now three, if I plug three into here, I'm gonna get three plus six, which is nine. And the square root of nine is three. So we get the point three and three. And since I already drew my graph in there, um, I have the linear one, right? If you plug in three, it stays three. So you have that same point. So let me draw the square root function as best as I can. 
it keeps going in that direction. And I have my x function over here. So we've got both. We've got y equals squared x plus six right there, and y equals x, that line. Now notice that they don't touch here, right? Is this actually a solution? This is not actually a solution. If you try to check that answer, Notice that when I plug it in here, I get square root of four, which is two, because there's no plus or minus out here. It's just, neg it's just two. But when you put the negative over here, negative two, two does not equal negative two. So this one actually isn't a solution, which is why you don't see them intersecting there at negative two. But I do have another equation that I'm supposed to be graphing. What equation is that? Mm -hmm. And that happens to be the actual x-axis, right? And that one I haven't drawn. And that one helps a lot because now I can see where my region is, right? What space is touching all three of those graphs? It would be this space in the center, right? Kind of like a, like a pie slice, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, short. Hi, <laughs> but yes. Okay, but then does it say, it says revolving about the X axis, okay? So right here, it does tell me I'm revolving about the X axis, which means I'm going around and around this guy, right? Now with shell, we have to use parallel wrinkles. So if my line of revolution is horizontal, then my rectangles also need to be horizontal. And we know that when they're horizontal like that, this little spot right here is dy. And we know that this long spot is the h, okay? And then I'll figure out rho depending on the tops and bottoms and all of that good stuff, okay? So let's see how we're gonna set this one up. We have two pi. And because this one is horizontal, I'm integrating with respect to which variable? Y, mm -hmm. be Y. So my bounds should be Ys. So what's the lowest Y value of that region and then the highest Y value of that region? Zero and three, good. Now for my height, for the H, I am going, it's going this way, right? horizontal. So I have to do right minus left. What is this right equation? What is the expression for this right graph? X mm -hmm. minus and then the left side. Square root of X minus, or I'm sorry, you're right, plus six. Then for the row part, Okay, since I already used right minus left, this has to be top minus bottom. Okay, and so we have to talk about that. Is it the region that's on top or the line of revolution that's on top? Which one's on top? The region and the variable here, actually the variable is not X. So should I have been putting this in here? No, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, this is supposed to be DY, right? So should we having X in there? No, and that's gonna happen on the test. Sorry, I already know. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so I have to have it in terms of Y. So let's go mess around with this stuff real quick because we have to. This one's not so bad, right? Y equal to X. If I wanna get X by itself, couldn't I just write it like that? Yeah. That one's not so bad. So I know what to write for X. If for X, we're just gonna write Y. It's this one that's a little bit more work to figure out. So how would I figure out, how would I get X by itself? Square both sides, yeah. So we square and we square, we get Y squared equals X plus six all by itself. And then how do I completely get X by itself? Mm -hmm. It'll be Y squared minus six. And so that's what I should have been solving here. 
and I'm subtracting that whole function. So make sure you put a parentheses or already distribute the minus, okay? Because you're subtracting that whole function. It's the right function minus the left function, okay? So right function minus the left. Now top bottom for the row, it's region or the line. And I can see that my region is above my line of revolution, right? So the region is represented by the same variable, y. And then the line of revolution is uh, the value of that line of revolution. So this line of revolution is, is zero, okay? And when I used to look at the back of the book, I would see y, and then sometimes I'd see negative y, and I'm like, why is it negative all of a sudden? <laughs> they did not explain to me this top minus bottom stuff. Can you say that again for the top portion being y? Always when you're talking about your region, you're mm -hmm. going to use the variable. Because the reason why is because that is going to be spanning from here. The rectangles start here. And they go all the way, all the way, all the way until they reach three, right? You, well, you don't know where your rectangle is going to be at. So that's why you use a variable to represent your region. Okay. okay. So the top is the, it ends at the point where they intersect, right? So it's just the this is the this y represents the region and then this guy represents the line of revolution so it's always going to be your region minus the value of the line of revolution so y minus the number so we're not putting a function no never 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 put in a function for the region it's just the variable y mm -hmm. <laughs> just the variable y it will always be the row part will always be x minus a number or a number minus x or if we're doing these guys with horizontal rectangles, it'll be y minus a number or a number minus y. Always, 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 okay? The variable represents that region, okay? Because we don't know where our angle is in that region, but it's at some particular y value as it spans across. And from here is just algebra, right? So we have y minus y squared plus six times y. So then we have y squared minus y cubed plus y. And we have more examples too. So we'll see different scenarios. Um, and I'm gonna integrate. So y cubed over three, y to the fourth over four, and then y squared over two. And I'm not gonna use six over two, I'm just gonna use a three. And like I always mention, right, if we have to push things back, we push them back, okay? When we get to chapters 9 and 10, stuff is going to move really, really fast because there's not a whole lot going on in those chapters. Um, and so we will have time to kind of shift things around. I know my calendar looks like <laughs> every day has something to do, but there are wiggle rooms scheduled in there. You just don't know because you don't know how long the sections take to cover, and I do. Um, <laughs> so I might schedule like one section on this day when I know that that section could have probably been covered with the other section the day before. Um, so that's like a wiggle room day in there, <laughs> but nobody knows about but me. Okay, so let's plug in our values. We're going to get, um, that's essentially with this canceling one of those three, it's just gonna be nine. And then three to the fourth, I think is 81 over four. And then that will eventually just be three cubed, which is 27. Now, when you're plugging in the zero, because of all the powers, it's just gonna be zero minus zero plus zero, right? So you could just put the big fat zero there. Be very careful with those zeros because I even saw it on this test and it, ha it will, I have seen it happen in the other future tests too, that people will just say it's zero even when these functions are not um, exponents. So like it was a logarithm 
or it wasn't e to the something. What is e to the zero? One. One. And so somebody would just zero, and that's wrong. They were like, oh, when I plug in zero, the whole thing's going to be zero. But it's not, because that's not zero, okay? So I have seen that happen. So be careful <laughs> when it comes to plugging in a zero. It's not always zero, but most of the time it is. <laughs> Just not always. It depends on what the functions are that you're plugging it into. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. So I get 63 over 4, which will reduce with this 2. So it'll essentially just be 63 pi over 2. Now, I actually, I need another piece of paper because I, I know it's going to take time, but I don't care. Um, I'm just going to use my time. I uh, want you to see that if I had done the problem not the way they told me to, I should get the same exact answer because you're still revolving the same region around the same line of revolution. So if you do it a different way, it's okay you but you should be getting the same exact answer and this is the one where i told in this section i highly recommend just so that you're practicing for the test that you do all the problems not just in the shell method but also do them in the the disk and washer method if it's possible and this one's possible because they already have my functions solved for y right so i shouldn't have a problem doing this with a different variable okay the only time it becomes a problem where you can't do both is if your functions cannot, like one variable cannot be isolated, no matter what you do. So I'm going to do the same problem, but instead of using shell method, we're going to do disk slash washer. And in disk slash washer, you have to use perpendicular rectangles, right? So if I were doing disk slash washer, I would be doing, um, oh, this one's ugly. No wonder why they don't want to do this dash washer. Somebody asked this question actually on one of the things. I would have to do this, right? Vertical rectangles. The problem is, is that on the left side of my y-axis, the top function is this curve and the bottom function is actually the x-axis. But when I come to the right side of the y-axis, the bottom is not the x-axis, is it anymore? The bottom is a completely different function. And so that's going to cause me to have to do two separate intervals. One interval from um, negative 6 to 0 so that I could get this volume as it goes around. And then on the other side, I'm going to have to go from 0 to 3 with this region as that region goes around. And then I just add the two volumes together, okay? So that might have been why they were like, hey, don't do disk method because then you're gonna have to do two intervals. But if you do shell method, I mean, nobody likes why, but, <laughs> but you would only have to have one interval, okay? And so that's why you're gonna get into that part where you're gonna have a choice. They're just gonna say, find the volume. And then you're gonna look at the image and be like, well, if I had to do it with respect to X, I'm gonna have to do two. I don't know if I want to do that. Well, if I do it with respect to Y, I only have one interval, but I don't really like Y. So I'd rather go with the other one and do two. You're going to make that choice on which one you want to do. Okay. But I want to show you that if you do do it with disc or washer, you should get the same 63 over 2 pi. Okay. So if I do my volume here, I'm doing disc and washer. Now let's remember, we're doing two ones. We're going from negative 6X to 0. And then we're going to go from 0 to 3, this x, from 0 to 3. So for this first little chunk of pi, right? So it looks like a little sector there, OK? The, am I using washer or disk? Look at this spot right here. Doesn't this even touch my line of revolution the whole way across? Yes right? So I would just be using disk. So it's basically the radius, which is this, squared. 
And what is that? That's the square root of x plus six, right? Top minus bottom, but the bottom's only zero. Okay, now, but over here on this side, I'm gonna cover it with my paper. If I cover that half, does that region touch the line of revolution the whole way? No. So on that side, I actually have to do washer. So there's probably another reason why they were like, nope, not doing dish slash washer, okay? But here, when you do the outer radius, remember, this is your center, right? So when you're doing the outer radius, you have to go from the center all the way to the top of the region, which is this. Well, that whole height is just top minus bottom. So square root of x plus six minus zero, or just the square root of x plus six. Now you have to take out the empty space. So that's this part right here. And so that's top minus bottom, which is just x minus zero again. And go look at the back of the book, they never even put the zero. So you're like, why is it that and not negative in all that kind of questions? I, ugh. It's just taking me back. I'm so traumatized. <laughs> but when you have the minus zero, it's not going to do nothing, right? And when I square it, what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. So that one's not going to be too bad. Now here, same thing's happening, right? So I'm going to get x plus six. And then when I square this, what am I gonna get? Minus x squared. And here my bound should have been from zero to three for x. Right, fingers crossed, this is supposed to come out to the same thing. So pi, we get x squared over two plus six x, negative six and zero. Here I get x squared over two plus six x minus x cubed over three from zero to three. So when I plug in the negative six, it's gonna be positive 36 over two. What is that, 18? Yes. And then when I plug in negative six, it's gonna become negative 36. When I plug in zero and zero, it's just gonna be two zeros. Now when I plug in three, what do we get there? That's nine over two. And then that would be 18. And then this would be basically nine. And then when I plug in zero, zero, and zero, I get a bunch of zeros. Go ahead. Say it again. Oh, yes, you're right. I'm supposed to be plugging in zero first, right? You're right. You are not wrong. Where's my paper? Yeah, you can do that. You can just swap the signs by putting a negative in front. Mm -hmm. You can. But I should have been plugging in zero and then plugging in the negative six. So that would have been 18 minus 36. There we go. That's going to make a difference, isn't it? So here, this is actually negative 18, but then with the negative, it's going to turn to positive 18. And over here, I don't know, 9 over 2 plus 18 minus 9, I get 27 over 2. And then what's that plus 18? Ah, 63 over 2. So we do get the exact same thing. It's just this one had a lot going on, didn't it? Not only did I have to split it up into two, half of it used disk method, and then the other half used washer method, 
right? So there's a lot going on had I chosen to do it with respect to X. But I just wanted you guys to be aware you can do both, okay? Unless the directions on a test specifically tell you you must use shell and there is one, um, then you have to use shell on that one, right? Okay, here's the next one. So we've got this problem here. This one also says shell just because that's the section we're in. So I'm going to keep using shell method and we'll talk about that line of revolution. Hmm, let me see the graph here. So one, two, three, four. X equal to four is over here. Um, X equal to one is right there. Y equal to zero is the X axis, right? This is the y axis. Just put y and x. I have too many vertical lines in there. And then the graph of y equals the square root of x. So zero squared is zero. One, two, three, four. So four. Eight. Oh no, I don't need to go that high. I'm just gonna do one and two. What is the square root of one? If I plug in one, what is the square root of one? Just one. If I plug in four in there, what's the square root of four? Two. So this is my curve. So I've drawn all the lines that they've given me, right? Which one is the one that we're revolving around? Mm -hmm. This is the one I'm revolving around. Now here's the weird part. Where's the region? One to four. Say it again, this side, all of that? Yeah. Or just the middle or just this, which? One one to four, right? It is not one to four. Ha oh, ha ha. Huh. <laughs> That's my evil laugh. <laughs> Look at the directions. It says, find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the plane region about the line x equals to four. These lines are what give you the region. Oh, so the region has to be touching all three of those lines or graphs, whatever. Okay. So you've got y equals square root of x, you've got y equals zero, and x equal to one as the bounds. Which region touches all three of those graphs? Zero. This little section in there. That's the region. It just happens to be revolving around four, okay? So be very, very, very careful with that one. That one was tricky, that's why I picked it. <laughs> but thank you for giving me options and suggesting things, because that does happen. People do either use this or they'll go from zero to four, but they'll do all kinds of things that they shouldn't have done, okay? Remember, these give you your bounce, your region. So, my line of revolution is vertical or horizontal. So in my solutions, when I write the solutions on the test, I will say line of revolution is what? Vertical, which implies um, I'm going to have to use what kind of rectangles? Vertical. And why? Because shell uses parallel rectangles. 
Okay, so when I write the solutions, I literally write what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Okay. And I think what I'm going to do this actual next time is because I didn't have a whole, whole bunch of questions on the review and I was trying to show as much as possible. But I think the next time after that deadline hits for the review, because I think I have the reviews due like on a Friday, right? Um, as soon as that Friday comes, I'm going to post the solutions because you would have already earned whatever score you're going to earn on that review. Um, and that way you can see what the solutions look like when it's all thoroughly written, okay? So that when you take the test, you kind of have an idea of what to be writing. Now, that doesn't mean you have to write exactly what I write, but you have to have the same level of explanation that I have, okay? Okay, so we have to use vertical rectangles. And if we're using vertical rectangles, what am I integrating with respect to dy or dx? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I have vertical rectangles, I'm doing dx. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So you're telling me why you're integrating with respect to x. If you have and you get used to writing that, you'll always know you're doing it with the correct variable. Okay. Now I'm going to set it up. So my bounds for X, because I'm doing DX, right? My bounds for X would be what? In that little region, zero to one. Is that zero to one? Yes, you're right. Okay. So then I'm gonna have H of X, I'm gonna do this in pieces because I feel like if I do too much of it, we're doing you get shell. lost. Yes, it says use shell. So we have to. So for the height, remember it's the lengthy part of the rectangle. You have to use top minus bottom. Why did you use dy? I thought we were looking for dx. Because <laughs> it's an error. <laughs> oh. Who's talking? I don't have my camera on. Alma. Alma, thank you. I'm probably, you know, don't feel bad if y'all get crosswise and mixed up. I mean, it happens to me. It's just, these things are crazy. <laughs> and I try to try and try, but it's still crazy. My brain still gets jumbled. Okay. So for this rectangle, we're going to be doing top minus bottom to get that length, right? So the top is represented by this curve, which is this value, right? That's so going to be the square root of x minus the bottom, which is this, and it's y equal to zero. So I'm just gonna put zero here. So that's my height. Now for the row, since I already used top minus bottom, this one has to be right minus left, okay? Remember, think of it like when you take, a vo when you take the integral of a volume, I'm sorry, when you take the integral of an area, you end up with the volume. So this should be, like the whole rectangles, if you're thinking about rectangles, right? It should be top to bottom, that's one measurement, and then left to right, that's the other measurement, right? And if you multiply those two measurements together, don't you get area, right? Length times width kind of idea. So it's the same thing. If you use one to get the height, you have to use the other directions to get the row. The height is easy to see because it's visual, right? This is my height. But then when you have to do the rows, if you did top minus bottom, you're gonna have to do the other directions, which are right minus left. Now, here's the weird part. Who's on the right, the region or the line? The line. So I have to use the value of that line. What is the value of that line? Four. Minus the region, and the region is represented by a variable. And since I'm doing dx, what is that variable? Just x. Mm -hmm. And once you have that set up, the rest of it is not the issue. It's the setup that's the issue, right? So I can take this square root of x and just distribute it because minus zero is like there's nothing happening. So this becomes four square root of x minus x square root of x. But I can't integrate radicals, so I have to turn them into powers. What is this power going to be? Uh, 
two? You're going too far. I still haven't integrated. Oh, one half. One half, yes. What about this one? If you have x times square root of x, and we know that square root of x is x to the one half, what do you that do when you multiply them? This one is three over two. Okay. Right, because this is one, and when you multiply two x's together, you add their exponents, right? So one plus one half is this three halves. So why is, why did you take that, that area? This because that's the region that they gave me. You're subtracting that from, from the middle. Where? Uh, one to four. Or no, I'm not subtracting any regions. We're not doing disk and washer method. We're doing shell method. Shell method is completely different. Shell method is the height of the rectangles times your rope. So you're defining Just area. where the where the rectangles span. So this one's the height of the rectangle like this. And then this one is where the rectangles are spanning across. And they're not all the way over there. They don't go all the way over there. They just go in this space over here. And that's what this represents. Four, you're gonna take away four because you're not over there, you're over here. And whatever this x value is, that's going to give you the location. So this part right here is always going to be your region minus your line of revolution, which will look like, in this case, x minus a value. Or it's the line of revolution minus the region. We're going to look like a number minus x. I noticed that the line was x equals Mm -hmm. That's why I have four here. Because for my right minus left, my right minus left, the line of revolution is on the right. And then this is the region is on the left. So I'm talking about the line of revolution being on the right and then the region being left. So it should be the value of that line of revolution minus the variable X. So it's like a big Right. It's just like it's factoring in this. That's why you're subtracting these. Okay. It's factoring okay. so in that gap. How did, or how did you like figure that it's going to be the region? This is my region because of these bounds. Oh, yeah. My region has to be bounded by these three graphs. This does not touch this. This region touches the line x equal to four, but x equal four is not part of my region bounds. That's just the line which I'm revolving around. My region has to be touching these three graphs. And the only chunk is image that touches these three graphs is this shaded gray area. So it's like that part is revolving. Right, around. So it's going to create kind of like a disc. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. It's just going to be flat on the inside and curvy on the outside. Yep, yep, yep. It is, it's gonna create like a flat, this, this. <laughs> it's basically gonna create an image like that when you revolve it around. But imagine it has a front part and a back part, okay? But that's what will happen as it revolves around. <laughs> yes. It does make like a donut. It's just curvy on the outside and then flat on the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I can actually integrate. So we have four X and when I add one, this exponent, what does it become? Three halves, over three halves or times the reciprocal, right? Two thirds. Same thing here, when I add one to the exponent, I get five halves. I would have to divide by five halves, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. Mm -hmm. So I did have a question on one of the problems. Somebody asked, is that supposed to be five halves? Why is, is the two fifths an error? Is the five halves an error? And it was an error. It's just what we got after we integrated. So then let's see, if I plug in one in here, I'm basically going to get um, eight over three. When I plug in one into this expression, that's just going to be one. 
So four times one times two is eight over the three. When I plug in one here, it's gonna be one times this fraction, which is just that fraction. And then when I plug in zero, it doesn't matter what power I raise it to, it's zero. And it doesn't matter what I multiply it by, it's still gonna be zero. Same thing here, zero times that is still zero. So two zeros means I'm subtracting nothing, yeah. Now let's see, we're gonna have two pi and then eight over three minus two over five. Mm -hmm. And it won't reduce the two, so we just get 68 pi over 15. Now I did this problem because I hate these things. They're just so crazy. So what did I do? Oh yeah, I got the same thing. Yeah, I did it earlier or like two days ago, but I did it. I got the same thing. I always have to make sure because I'm like, is my mind right <laughs> or not? <laughs> and it depends day to day. It really does. Did my kids drive me crazy this morning or not? <laughs> 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 and it happens more often than not okay <laughs> they're 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 five and eight and they just fight all the darn time yeah i got three of them at the same age and then i have a teenager and then she still fights i'm like girl you are 15 why are you fighting with a five-year-old <laughs> makes no sense the worst part is a five-year-old that's Oh, yes, yes, that happens. Okay, we have 10 minutes, so we might be able to get through one, but we're definitely not going to be able to get through the other one, okay? So we'll try one, and but we have not gotten to 7.4. I have actually three parts to this problem before we actually get to 7.4. So it's okay. We're just going to push things back. We still should finish all the sections by next Friday, so that shouldn't be an issue, but we're just going to play it as we go, okay? So for this one, they're telling me to use disc or shell, okay? Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not gonna do both of them, but I am gonna pick the one that allows me to integrate with respect to X, because that's what I prefer. I prefer to integrate with respect to X. But we'll see which one we have to do for these guys. So let's draw the graph. We're going to one, two, three, four, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I have I equal to zero, which is the x-axis, right? And I have x equal to one, which is a vertical line like this. And I have x equal to three, one, two, three, which is another vertical line like this. And these are part of my bounds. So my region will be between one and three this time, okay? And this will be the bottom of my region. But now let's graph that top one. So when I plug in one, what do I get? Six over one, which is six. When I plug in three, what do I get? One third. So if this is not one third, I think it's two thirds. Mm -hmm. So it's probably gonna be like close to one, but not quite one, right? And if you wanted another point, you could just plug in two. What is six over four? That's three halves, which is one and a half. So it'd be about right there. Just so you can have an idea of what the curve looks like in the middle, right? So I plugged in two and got six over four, which was three and three halves, one and a half. So my region that's covered by all four of these lines or curves is going to be this region in here. Now, my line of revolution for part A is the X axis. So I am revolving around this, okay? Now I want vertical rectangles because I want to integrate with respect to X. 
Okay. So if I want vertical rectangles and this is horizontal, which one am I using, disc or shell? Yeah. Right, because the line of revolution is horizontal. My rectangles, my rectangles, my rectangles are perpendicular. So we'll say rectangles and line of revolution are perpendicular, which means I have to use disc slash washer. Now, which one am I actually going to use? Disc or washer? Does, uh-huh, because does my region touch the whole line of revolution through the whole region? It does. This is my line of revolution. And doesn't the region touch it the whole way? Mm -hmm. So it is disc. Well, that's nice because then I don't have any of these top outer business going on. So my bounds are going to be from what to what? Where this one do we start from zero or one? Two, you three. have to start where the region is. The region is from what to what? Three. three. One to three. The region is not over here, right? Then the radius, which is from the center all the way to the top of the graph, which happens to be this exact same rectangle. So the top is represented by this and the bottom is represented by y equals zero. And my radius is squared and then dx. But I know I don't have to write that zero, right? So when I square this, it's going to be 36 over x to the fourth. And I can factor out the 36 with the pi. But I cannot um, apply the power rule when x is in the denominator. So how can I bring it up to the numerator? Uh, negative, four. Mm -hmm. negative 4. And then I can integrate this finally. So if I add one to the exponent, what is my new exponent? Um, Negative three, and then divide by that new exponent. And these guys can reduce. So it's actually gonna be negative 12 pi times x to the negative three from one to three. Oops. I'm going to rewrite this as one over x cubed to make it easier for myself when I plug in the three and the one. And I know right now it looks like your volume is going to be negative, but it actually won't be. Because when you plug in three there, you get one over 27. And when you get one, you get one, which means this will be a negative number times that negative number. So it'll eventually be positive. 1 over 27 minus 1, oops, should be like 26 over, yeah, negative 26 over 27. And that does reduce. I'm not going to put the pi in there. I'm just going to negative 12 times negative 26 over 27. And we get 104 over 9 pi. Mm -hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Yay, that's the pink one. So I got the same answer as I did before. Okay, we'll stop here. Let me span out so those of you that are trying to do the problem. Um, oh gosh, how far do I have to zoom out? Ooh, there we go. The whole thing. Dang, I still can't get the whole thing in there. And this thing don't go no higher. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm gonna post it anyway, so you'll have it. Um, but we'll continue with 7.3. This is the last example. And then we'll continue with 7.4 the next time, okay? We might be able to start 7.5. So I think I'm gonna push the 7.6 discussion for the next class, okay? Like next week, actually because we'll meet each other on Wednesday and then we want to meet each other until Monday, right?
So I'm going to push the 7.6 discussion until next Monday. You'll have to watch it before Monday's class. Does anybody have any questions? What to do? Where we're going? Nothing. Your brains are mushed already. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if you do come up with questions, just message me. Right. Okay. Well, you guys have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Let me see. Stop recording.